Close your eyes, focus on your breath. Watch it all the way in, all the way out. And then with the next breath, and then with the next. We're trying to get the mind trained here. As the Buddha said, when the mind is well trained, it brings happiness. When it's not trained, it's like a little puppy that you brought home from the vet. It hasn't been trained at all. It's going to make a mess all over the place. It's going to bite things and chew on things. You've got to train it. The same way with the mind. It tends to go with its moods and its emotions. And it has to be trained that it can't do that. We've got some training outside as part of our socialization, learning how to be a member of human society. But there are a lot of things that are allowed in human society that the Buddha says, and it's really unsociable behavior, unskillful behavior. So we're trying to raise that training to a higher level. So ordinarily, you can sit here and you can think about anything you wanted to for the next hour or so. But the Buddha is recommending that you learn how to bring the mind to a topic that allows it to settle down with a sense of well-being in the present moment, but to keep it there. In doing this, you develop some good qualities in the mind. You develop mindfulness, the ability to remember what you're supposed to be doing, alertness, watching what you actually are doing, then you can compare the two. And if it turns out you're not doing what you should be doing, then you bring in the quality of atapa or ardency. You try to do, do the right thing. And you have to learn how to talk yourself into wanting to do the right thing, because otherwise it's just going to be a battle between your idea of what you should do or what somebody else, someone else is telling you you should do, and your ideas of what you want to do. And when no one else is around, you just go with what you want to do. So now you've got to remind yourself, okay, that you're here watching, and the Buddha's shoulds are shoulds that are good for you. They will really, really bring happiness. Simply that you have to learn how to sacrifice some of your emotions, some of your urges, some of the things you would like to think about right now. You put them aside and keep coming back to the breath, back to the breath. Because if we really want happiness in life, we have to decide there are a few things that are really important, and you're willing to sacrifice other things for the sake of that. And the Buddha is suggesting that you take seriously the idea that a true happiness that doesn't have any suffering at all is possible. And so it's worth it to be willing to sacrifice other pleasures for the sake of that. You can say it's like playing chess. You're willing to lose some of the pieces so you can win. Or it's like planting an orchard. If you plant all the trees that you like in the orchard, you find that some of them kill the other trees. Like you plant a couple of eucalyptus trees and everything else dies. But you want fruit trees, you want trees that are more useful than eucalyptus, so you've got to keep the eucalyptus out. In the same way, your, your thoughts and urges that go against the Dharma. You've just got to learn how to weed them out, push them aside, make sure they don't get in the way of developing. The, these good qualities in the mind, because that's what the Pali word for meditation is. Bhavana means to develop. You're trying to develop the mind at the same time you train it. Similarly, that training and developing the mind is very different from training and developing the body. With training and developing the body, you've got to, you've got to jump, you've got to lift this, you've got to do that, move around a lot. Whereas in the mind, you try to train it by making it still. You develop it by making it still. And then you find the qualities that are needed to keep it still will serve you in good stead. So stay right here, and do your best to want to stay right here, and you'll be glad you did. <laughs>